thank you all so much for being here. As I look around, I could see that Mary has ordered us the perfect weather. Oop, up my things. While well, we'll have plenty of time to reminisce afterward, we're going to take a few minutes celebrating an amazing life. Mary was such a big part of everyone here in Kill Devil Hills, especially here around the town. And um, she worked on more projects than I could possibly mention. And here in the barking in the background is almost on point. That's the audio cue. Um, this whole park was really a, a big part of uh, something she always wanted to do. She cares about all creatures, all animals, all people, especially the pups. And uh, in case you had not heard, the other exciting part about today is that we are renaming the park Mary's Paws Park. So, <laughs> I'd like to introduce someone that needs no introduction our previous mayor, Sheila Davies. Thank you. Can you all hear me okay in the back? Okay. Somewhat. Um, first off, I just wanna say um, what an honor it is to be asked to speak today and share some remembrances of Mary. To know Mary Elizabeth Quidley is to have found treasure those who know Mary well know what a kind, gentle, and caring soul she was. Some of her friends described her as a fine kitty hawker, a third generation kitty hawker, a loyal and caring friend, an open and friendly soul who radiated warmth, someone who was smart as a whip and a great conversationalist, one who did so much for her community and the state, and a behind the scenes orchestrator with a huge heart. I have known Mary for roughly 20 years, dating back to my days working for the YMCA when I would call her about making presentations to the Board of Commissioners. She was always so helpful and treated me with such a welcoming spirit. It wasn't until 2011, however, when I truly got to know Mary and understand what a remarkable woman she was. During my eight years as mayor of town of Kittleba Hills, Mary was a confidant, a mentor, a guide, a historian, a compassionate ear, a wise counselor, and a friend. One of my favorite photos of Mary was the photo of my first swearing in, with Mary leading the oath, my oldest son Wyatt, three at the time, <clears throat> holding the Bible in his Woody from Toy Story cowboy boots, and my husband Daryl holding our youngest son Chase, one and a half, who was trying to jump out of his arms. Mary was smiling warmly and reassuringly in the photo, and at that time her warmth and support was just what I needed. I remember vividly before that meeting grappling with the decision of whether to include the boys in the swearing-in ceremony or not, as they were so young at the time and I was concerned that they would be unpredictable and potentially disruptive. Mary was resolute in her guidance, which was absolutely they should be part of the ceremony. She even suggested Wyatt hold the Bible. She acknowledged that they are a huge part of who I am, and she stressed how important it is to always be your true self, no matter what. And Mary was just that, real. She wasn't into show or facades. She was the epitome of salt of the earth, an individual considered as representative of the best and noblest elements of society. Mary had the voice, heart, and soul of an angel, a true giver by definition. She loved to please and help people, whether it was baking and sharing her goodies, or helping guide someone through a tough situation. Mary was a pillar of comfort and care. She had a calming and reassuring presence and was respected and valued for her knowledge, wisdom, and experience. Mary was the Google of the Outer Banks before Google even existed. <laughs> if you needed to know anything about history, whether it was the Outer Banks or a different particular topic of interest, Mary could spit out the history as if reciting from Encyclopedia Britannica. A very common phrase in the office used repeatedly every day was just ask Mary. She was the go-to person for any and all things. Her historical knowledge spanned well beyond the town and Outer Banks 
as she was an avid reader, a self-educated expert of World War II, Holocaust history, and Civil War history. Mary really should have been a contestant on Jeopardy, as she most certainly would have been a tenured champion. Mary combined her love for the kitchen and cooking with her passion for history and pulling together the 50th anniversary KDH cookbook entitled Great Food and Great Memories. She was instrumental in establishing the Wallace H. McCohen Scholarship Fund for Dare County High School seniors who plan on attending a North Carolina college or university, and $5 from every cookbook sold goes to support the scholarship. She loved Ms. McCohen, Mr. McCohen, and was proud of the scholarship fund in his memory. So much so that she stepped way out of her element and attended a commissioner's meeting as biker snake pit, donned in leather chaps and a bandana to help promote the raffle of a motorcycle which supported the scholarship fund. The love Mary had for KDH was unrivaled. She served the town for over 37 years until her passing and she cared deeply for the town, the staff, the residents, and anyone who interacted with the town. The town was Mary's home away from home, and based on the hours I witnessed she spent at the town, I may argue that for many years it was her primary home. When you think of why someone would love a place so much and spend so much time at the town as Mary did, you have to understand that working for the town was not a job for Mary. Working for the town was a passion, and it meant being with family. Mary loved her work family, and a number of whom became more like brothers and sisters and the dearest of dear friends. The void Mary leaves behind is immeasurable and irreplaceable. Her legacy in the town will live on through special projects and spaces she helped develop and create. From this beautiful aviation park and frog pond, and now most notably Mary's Paws Park, to events like Trash Attack and the Ice Cream Social, and the Christmas celebration with Santa and the town elves. These spaces and events reflect Mary's vision for the town of being a happy place, an interactive community center where people come together to be with one another and share in a beautiful, serene environment. In addition to her town family, Mary deeply loved and cared for her biological family. Mary enjoyed spending time with her family and especially adored her nieces and nephew. Playing board games with her family was particularly enjoyable for Mary, so much so that games went on beyond single settings. Mary once asked to borrow Monopoly money from Debbie Diaz, an odd request, but one that Debbie was able to fulfill, only later to learn that the reason the money was needed is that the family had a game of Monopoly that had outstretched more than a week, and the bank was empty, and they needed to finish the game. <laughs> Aside from her love of the town and her love of her family and friends, Mary had a general love for animals. From her beloved Andy Dandy, to Rosemary, to Dorothy Vader, to step for babies Maggie Mae and Georgie, to really all living creatures, Mary had a special fondness. Staff recall Mary leaving corn in the back of her truck to make sure the squirrels at Town Hall had decent nourishment. Mary knew what great pleasure fur babies fur babies bring to others. And when you visit Town Hall, you frequently are met and greeted by one of the staff members' furry children. It makes visiting the town feel very homey and welcoming, just as Mary desired. While words are ultimately inadequate to describe Mary and how she touched each of us in this wonderful place we live, I do know Mary would not want us to suffer in grief or sadness. In the spirit of Mary's gentleness, kindness, and comforting approach, she would ask that we move on as best as possible, cherishing our memories and using them to find peace. Sadly, there are many unchecked to-do boxes with the untimeliness of Mary's passing, but I feel certain Mary would want those plans to proceed. Carol, I hope you will make that trip to Paris. Mary will be with you just in a different vantage point. And Debbie, go see Wicked in New York <laughs> and know that Mary will be soaking it all in. All of us need to use Mary's love and tender soul as inspiration to do for ourselves and for others and to give to our communities. A passage from Ecclesiastes describes well the depth and breadth of Mary's friendship. It reads, a loyal friend is something beyond price. There is no measuring, excuse me, a loyal friend is 
is a powerful defense. Whoever finds one has indeed found a treasure. A loyal friend is something beyond price. There is no measuring its worth. A loyal friend is the elixir of life. Thank you, Mary, for being the extraordinary person you were. Thank you for the gifts and treasure you have given all of us. Thank you for being a loyal friend and enriching our lives. <clears throat> Your legacy lives, lives on in those around you and in the lasting contributions you have made to the town and our community. Many aspire to leave the world a better place. And Mary, you did just that. Your life and friendship is truly an elixir of life for all of us. God bless. time that um, the family had asked if anyone would like to share any of their remembrances of Mary. We encourage you to do so either from where you're standing or if you want to come up here. That would be great. Um, in addition to that, you may have noted there are cards on the table um, that if you have a special memory that you would like to jot down, we are collecting these to give to the family um, sometime next week. So, but we welcome people to share their remembrances, please. Quidley. Mary was my aunt. My father is Willie Quidley. And as me and my cousin Beeman back there were just chuckling about one thing that you'll never ever forget about Mary is, I don't know if y'all knew where she lived, 
But that driveway has totaled more vehicles than an impound yard has. I mean, and I'm talking about totaled. I forget, it's probably been, I don't know, a long time ago, but somebody had just got a vehicle and they went down that thing and, oh my gosh, you had to, if you knew what you were doing, you might as well back into it so you can pull out because there was no backing out of that thing. It was just dangerous. That's all it was. But Aunt Mary was my aunt and I love her truly and I know that she'll look over everybody and she thanks everybody for coming out here and uh, that's all I wanted to say. I love Aunt Mary and uh, rest in peace. Thank you. I'm Lindy Harris, Mike Harris's wife, and trust me, through the years listening to Mike and Mary talk, I always knew when she was on the other end of the phone because he'd pick it up with a <laughs> and you'd hear him, her, hollering back the same thing at him. They, uh, Mary is very dear to our hearts, and we were talking the other day, we can't even remember when we first met her. She's just always been in our lives. And um, one of the things, many, many years ago, I used to and I used to always go over and hang out at her house all the time. We'd make some homemade hot chocolate and sit by the fireplace. And uh, she's got these, if you've ever been to Mary's house, she's got all these prisms and um, crystals that she would hang in the kitchen and hang, had them in her bedroom and they would just glow everywhere and I always loved them. So one year she got me a bunch of, about six crystal icicles for my Christmas tree. And needless to say, through the years I've continued to collect them and my tree is now a Mary tree <laughs> because it's all done with crystals, but based on Mary. And through the years, she has made different stained glass items for me. And Mike and I have built quite a bit of our furniture in her house for her, from her bed and tables and chairs and different things. So we've, it was really kind of cool to know that we shared some things. She always had stuff in her house from us and we always had a piece of her and we'll always have a piece of her with us in many different ways. She was a very giving and very special person. I'm Greg Loy and that's why Harris right there. <laughs> it's better half to it speak. Um, I guess I've known Mary since the second grade back a long ways and uh, she taught me a lot working for the town and, and uh, uh, a lot of interpersonal relationships we shared. Um, I think Randy Metzger was uh, around here somewhere and he was going maybe I should say something about the way we carried on at our board meetings and uh, before our board meetings rather well at our board meetings but it used to be we'd have an agenda team meeting. Uh, Debbie you still have that don't you? Oh, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> So that's when all the department heads get together and they, and they hash out everything that's going to be said at the meeting and, and, and try to bulletproof, you know, um, the way things are going to go. Well, some, it, believe it or not, sometimes Mary was strongly opinionated about things. <laughs> if anybody knows that, and, and if anybody knows me sometimes, they might say the same. So uh, Mary and I would always have a lot of fun. And uh, let me see, Mary, Mary Elizabeth Quidley, McHugh, uh, Proud Mary, Sweet Mary, uh, one of my best friends uh, in the town, and uh, we love her, and I know everybody else does here, and we'll be missed. I mean, that's, that's all there is to it. I mean, I felt like she's always there for me, and she is. So, God bless you, Mary. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Jennifer Berry, Mary's neighbor of over 27 years and unfortunately in the last several years I've had several losses and regretted not coming in front of everyone and speaking of those people so also I was Mary's hairdresser so I have a lot of deep dark secrets about <laughs> being her neighbor but being her hairdresser too and there's a couple stories not long after my husband Carl and I moved in, one morning I was fixing my hair to go to work and my blow dryer just quit working. I said, would you run next door and ask our new neighbor Mary if I could borrow your blow dryer? <laughs> sure. 
I don't own a blow dryer. <laughs> so I said, well, what do you do? And I would see her in the morning because the way her house set, she'd come down the steps, hair all over the place, get in the truck, and that's when she'd comb her hair. <laughs> Should I just stick my head out the window? <laughs> so... You know, we talk about Mary's board meetings, you know, we always, my husband and I, Carl, have talked about our properties were more like one property. We knew Mary's every move. She knew our every move. I always knew first Wednesday of every month was the board meeting. She was going to be home late. And then there's the other thing I think about when I think about Mary. She loved to cut grass. <laughs> and... Every time she started that lawnmower, my husband would say, okay, any moment it's going to stop and I'm going to have to go do something. Because I think she had it as low as she could get it to the ground. Rocks flying everywhere. And Carl would call her the marinator. It's on her lawnmower. But we didn't ever tell Mary not to cut our grass. <laughs> we just you had to do a few ducks every once in a while from rocks. And thanks for letting me have this time because I feel so blessed to have had her in my life as long as I did. And she was an amazing woman that I could, any time there was something on my mind, and I knew I needed to talk to somebody. She was the one. She might not always tell me what I wanted to hear, but she always told me right. So I encourage every one of you, if you can't stand up here and speak about her this afternoon, please just write something down so you won't have a regret. Jennifer, you're so right. I've been standing back there and kept thinking, I really need to get up there and say something, what have you. Uh, Mary was a friend of mine for 40 plus years, a um, long time before I ever became mayor of Kildova Hills. Of course, all of y'all knew that my late husband, Bobby, was a commissioner and mayor pro tem, and Mary was always there guiding him as, as well. The town ran very well with Mary doing her thing. Um, I have a collection of Santa Clauses, and of course every Christmas I would always get one when she was doing with the ceramics. I have the um, stained glass of um, the monument and, and different things. Uh, Mary encouraged me when I first became mayor, um, right before me when Duncan was mayor, um, Mary helped with the commission to celebrate the Wright Brothers' 100th anniversary. And I told her, I said, well, Mary, I'm just coming out. I don't know if I can go there to Raleigh and sit there and, and what have you. She said, oh, yes, you can, because I'm not going to go anymore. So she kind of put me in that element, and I appreciate that because that was a learning experience on my part. And when I was on the Streets Improvement Committee, she was there. You could always go to Mary. She knew the, the ins and outs of the town of Kildonville Hills, and she was very, very brilliant, really, if you want a word, I haven't heard that this afternoon, she really was, and the thoughts that Sheila said, I was sitting there and, and thinking, yes, I, I know that, and all, and, and Jennifer, and, and, uh, and I didn't even recognize Mike Harris, and see, I mean, like, goodness gracious, but you know, the, um, all the police officers, I mean, the town employees went to Mary, and man, she could cook, and what have you. That is one thing, she, and loved to share. She also bowled with me when the bowling alley first opened up in 1985. She was on my team, and uh, let's see, oh, when uh, we had one of the recessions in uh, the 90s and what have you, um, and the real estate was this, like this, what have you. I cleaned cottages with Mary and her mother for um, Twitty. And then we did some private, I mean, we've, we had a long relationship and what have you. And uh, I, I treasure every bit of it. I was fortunate enough for, you know, God works in mysterious ways. And it had been a while since I had paid a visit to Town Hall to see Debbie and Mary. 
and I guess it was probably maybe November, 1st of November, um, I decided to, oh, I know what it was. It was when we had early voting. And of course, you know, I had to go do my, you know, civic duty to vote. And I thought, you know what, I'm gonna go upstairs and, and see Mary and, and uh, Debbie and what have you. Cause I've got to share the news that I had gotten a puppy. And you know how Mary was about with, you know, with animals and stuff and what have you. And she was so happy cause I had lost my max uh, six months prior to that and of course when I had seen her before that and I had told her I said I'm not doing another That's it. No more dogs. Then I'm done And then I had to go tell her that I couldn't stand it. I had to have a puppy. So this here. I'm waiting for uh, Sam to get just a little bit older and more controllable and I'm gonna bring him out to the park This is a great addition everything and Mary was well loved as you can see with everybody that took time to come out here to um pay tribute to her. Carol, good on your family? Yes, great. Loved her. Bear with me. I'm not a public speaker. I'm very shy. But Mary is my second cousin and she is part of my childhood. My mother and her grandmother were sisters. So we would come in the summers and spend time with them. We lived about three hours away. We'd come and spend summers and I have a photograph. My dad used to take a lot of photos and I have a photograph that I adore. And it's of us crammed on a swing, a porch swing <laughs> at your home place. And I think it was me and Susan and Willie and probably Gracie and I know Ellen and, and Mary were there too. But we were tiny and we were all squished on this porch swing and our feet were <laughs> barefoot and sandy <laughs> and that's what I remember and I, I love that photograph and I love the time that we would come and spend with y'all. God bless y'all. Y'all are my, my heart even though we don't see each other. So Mary's neighbor just made me feel like I don't want to regret not speaking because <laughs> I've been with the town for 25 years. Um, Greg Loy hired me. I worked beside him, knew Mary and Greg's relationship very well. And it was, it was, it was a love, love, hate relationship. It, that, that's the order. Love, love, hate. But, um, and Greg drug me to every meeting just to teach me how, the town. And I walk into my first meeting and in comes Mary. And I said, and everybody's talking and talking and talking to Mary goes, all right now. And it was silent. And I said, I gotta get to know this one. <laughs> she's, got, she's got something that I want at the ripe old age of 22. I wanted, I wanted to be able to walk into a room 25 years from now and be like, all right now. And everybody goes, that's it. In my time, not only was she my mentor, but she became a really good friend of mine. I'm gonna ask you to look at the music stand. Um, that was my daughter. And when she started middle school, it was a hard transition. And Mary had basically stopped doing stained glass. And she came to me one day and she just said, honey, I made this for, for Sydney. It's a symbol of strength and tell her to hang it in her window and every morning look at it and remind her to be strong and it'll be fine. And Every time I went and sat in Mary's office, whether it was for work or my therapy session, um, she'd look at me, she'd go, sugar, it's gonna be fine. And so, Mary, we're gonna be fine. Love you. Material things, but with her heart, with a smile. She was my cheerleader. I think she was for some of y'all here too. The best sister 
the best all. Loving, kind, everything that Sheila said and that I know that so many of y'all out there know about her because you experienced it. So thank you all for being here. If you honor us. Thank you to the town for this because it meant everything to her. Thank you all. Thank you.